Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the cortisol. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid that is secreted by the adrenal cortex and that has many roles in the body. Now what is a glucocorticoid? Glucocorticoid. Glucocorticoid is derived from three words. First, gluco, carti, and kite. Gluco is for glucose. Carti is for adrenal cortex. And kite is for steroid. So the glucocorticoids are the steroids which are secreted by the adrenal cortex and which has something to do with the glucose. The steroid which is secreted by the adrenal cortex and which metabolize glucose, which carry out the metabolism of glucose that is glucocorticoid. What is steroid? Steroid is a group of compound which is having a ring in common that ring is called the i'm going to write the name of that ring that is a bit uh, cyclo per hydro pentano penantrene ring This is the name of the ring which each and every steroid have. Each and every steroid have a ring in common that is cycloperhydropentanopinentrine ring. And uh, I'm going to write the name of that This is the cycloperhydropentanopinentrine ring. This ring, uh, this is having one pentagonal uh, shape and uh, three hexagonal structure. So this is the cycloperhydropentanopinentrine ring, which each and every steroid have. If ever steroid have not this structure, then that would not be a steroid. If a compound does not have this structure then that compound should not be a steroid so uh, coming toward the main point now coming toward the cortisol what is cortisol cortisol is a glucocorticoid that is secreted by the adrenal cortex what is the adrenal cortex adrenal cortex is the outer layer of the adrenal gland what is the adrenal gland adrenal gland is the gland which is present above each kidney each of the two kidney contain a structure a trigonal structure that is called adrenal gland adrenal gland consists of two main parts the outer part is called adrenal cortex and the inner part is called adrenal medulla adrenal cortex consists of three main layers the adrenal cortex consists of three main layers the outermost layer is called zona glomerulosa the middle layer is called zona fasciculata and the inner layer is called zona reticularis the cortisol we are learning about the cortisol so the cortisol is responsible for the secretion so cortisol is the steroid that is secreted by the zona fasciculata. Cortisol is secreted by the zona fasciculata. Zona fasciculata is responsible for the secretion of cortisol. Uh, zona fasciculata secrete three types of uh, glucocorticoids. Uh, the three types of glucocorticoid which are secreted by the zona fasciculata are the cortisol, cortisone, and corticosterone. 
but uh, the main one which uh, we are going to learn about is the cortisol because the major action of the glucocorticoid within the body is due to the cortisol more than 90 percent of the action performed by the glucocorticoid within the body is due to the cortisol so the, the the action of the cortisol and cortisol and corticosterone are the same but uh, the cortisol is uh, very potent and uh, the major action in the body uh, is due to the cortisol that is the cortisol what is the major action of the cortisol cortisol is a life protecting chemical that is secreted by the adrenal cortex life protecting chemical how the life protecting chemical the cortisol uh, act mainly on the uh, metabolism of glucose and you know that the basic fuel of the body is the glucose which uh, is utilized by many tissues of the body by all tissue almost all the tissues of the body uh, so its major action is on the glucose uh, this cortisol is secreted by the adrenal cortex during stress situation when the body is in stress the body secrete the cortisol uh, sometimes this is secreted by the uh, this by the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system but uh, normally when the sympathetic nervous system is not stimulated uh, the whether the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated or not but the cortisol will be secreted during stress situation the stress situation is the situation when there is uh, some sort of uh, pathogenic uh, attack on the body or some sort of trauma or some sort of inflammation within the body or hypersensitivity reaction so in this uh, condition the cortisol will be secreted by the adrenal cortex and what is the role of the adrenal cortex during this stress situation it uh, calm down the stress on the body how this calm down the stress on the body uh, now we are going to learn uh, in the diagram you can see that uh, this is uh, the cortisol and the cortisol has uh, action on the liver on the muscle on the pancreas on the adipose tissue and on the bones uh, how it act on the uh, on various tissues of the body uh, first of all we will learn about the liver cortisol goes into the blood circulation and it uh, combined with the hepatocyte in the hepatocyte it uh, uh, activate certain receptors it uh, activate uh, certain hormones who are there in the uh, in the liver which uh, potentiate the effect of the glucagon the cortisol opposes the insulin or here the cortisol opposes or counteract the pancreas or the insulin it decreases the secretion of insulin or it decreases the effect of insulin actually the cortisol increases the amount of glucose in the blood the cortisol increases the amount of glucose in the blood and the insulin is responsible for the for the decrease of glucose concentration within the blood how the insulin decrease the glucose concentration within the blood the insulin actually act on the receptors on the hepatocyte or on various other cells or the muscle cells of the body for the absorption of glucose for the absorption of glucose into the into various cells into various tissues but what the cortisol do the cortisol opposes the action of insulin the cortisol opposes those receptors which are activated by the insulin it opposes those receptors which are responsible for the uptake of glucose so the cortisol decreases the uptake of glucose into the cells it also decreases the synthesis of glycogen within the liver from the glucose the cortisol also counteract uh, 
the synthesis of glycogen because in the stress situation we are not going to uh, to package or to pack the glucose units we are going to burn the glucose unit in the stress situation we are not going to the to make stores of the glycogen or make stores of the glucose so we are not storing we are not going to storage those glucose unit during the stress situation so the cortisol is responsible for the um, for blocking the chains of the glycogen so it uh, decreases the and uh, it uh, stops the stop the synthesis of glycogen from the glucose unit within the liver uh, so the glucose concentration within the blood will be increased when the glucose concentration within within the blood will be increased what will do what will happen the glucose will be used as a fuel throughout the body it will be used as a fuel as a source of atp throughout the body uh, during stress situation it is uh, this glucose is needed for the body so this increases the uh, the glucose concentration uh, it also opposes the insulin it, uh, it do not opposes the action of glucagon we are going to learn it later but we are coming toward the muscles uh, the cortisol decreasing amino acid uptake by the muscles it also decreases the amino acid uptake by the muscle why the amino acid is uptaked by the muscle for the synthesis of um, protein chain for the, for the synthesis of polypeptide chain but the cortisol opposes or have the synthesis of polypeptide chain but uh, uh, the cortisol um, in the the cortisol is responsible for the breakdown of muscle tissue also for the polypeptide chains inside the muscle the cortisol is responsible for the poly for the break, breakdown of the polypeptide chain within the muscle that increases uh, the secretion of amino acid from the muscles it increases the transfer of amino acid from uh, the muscle to the blood circulation because the amino acid are also needed for the by the body during stress situation during stress situation a lot of amino acid will be used by the injured tissues for the synthesis of various uh, various protein very as various other proteins so in the stress situation we are not going to make the muscle tissue bigger we are not going to store the amino acid in the muscle in the stress situation we are going to do we are going to synthesize some other protein which are responsible for the, the for the tackling of the injury for the tackling of the stress situation for the tackling of the hypersensitivity reaction so the amino acid will be used will be utilized for the synthesis of some other proteins which are used by the body which are not used by the um which are not used by the as by the muscle uh, by the by the muscle muscular mass so the cortisol is responsible for the breakdown of muscular tissue for the breakdown of polypeptide chain inside the muscle and the uh, increased concentration of the uh, amino acid inside the blood vessel the cortisol is responsible for the increased concentration of amino acid inside the blood vessel the cortisol is also responsible for the synthesis of glucose from amino acid cortisol is responsible for the for the synthesis of glucose for many other compounds many other compounds uh, that is called gluconeogenesis so the cortisol is responsible for the synthesis of glucose for many other chemicals that may be fats that may be uh, um, amino acids that may be many other tissues so the gluconeogenesis is also uh, one of the function of the cortisol uh, and gluconeogenesis will happen when there is extra amount of uh, many other tissues many other compounds uh, other than the glycogen uh, its action on the adipose tissue the the cortisol also break down the adipose tissue the adipose tissue which is the tissue which is the fats tissue which is made up of adipocytes which is the storing fats of the body so the the, the, st the stored fats in the body will be lysed will be the lysis of the adipose tissue will be uh, carried out by the cortisol 
why it carry out the lysis of cartis um, the lysis of adipocyte or the lysis of the fat tissue why the cortisol uh, this carry out the lysis of the splitting of the fat uh, within the adipocyte because to mobilize the fat stored inside the body to mobilize the fat stored inside the body and you know that the large amount of energy is created by the uh, fats within the body um, the largest amount of energy is created by the fats the second one is uh, then uh, glucose and proteins are on the second one but on the first line the uh, large amount of energy is uh, produced by the fats so uh, the, in the stress situation we are going to burn out our fats we are going to burn out our adipose tissue or fats deposits so the cortisol is responsible over here for the for the lysis of adipose tissue the cortisol over here is also responsible for the degeneration of bones um, for the degeneration of bone it carry out the lysis of the bone it it inhibit the absorption of the calcium to the bone it it inhibit the absorption of calcium to the bone and it uh, carry out the lysis up uh, uh, lysis up bone tissue so when the stress situation uh, proceed for the long interval of time then the um, then the bones become porous then the bones become weak the bones become weak by the exposure of the cortisol for the long interval so Uh, the cortisol is also responsible for the breakdown of the of bone tissue where is bone tissue so the effect of the cortisol and the bone is to reduce the bone mass to decrease the uptake of calcium by the bones and also to increase the action of the osteoclast and decrease the action of the osteoblast osteoblast are the cells which are present inside the bone the bone tissue uh, so the osteoblast are responsible for the making of mass of the bone for the formation of bone and osteoclast are responsible for the uh, for, for the uh, for the destroying of the bone for the destruction of the bone so one is the osteoblast and the other is the osteoclast osteo blast in osteoclast the osteoclast is responsible for the lysis of the bone while the osteoblast is responsible for the formation of the bone so the cortisol activate the osteoclast and inhibit the osteoblast so the bone will be degenerated why it uh, why it uh, activate the osteoclast because to because in the stress situation we are not going to make the muscular the the mass of the bone in the stress situation we are going to uh, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, increase the uh, increase the amino acid concentration inside the blood so bones are also made up of protein bones are also also made up of amino acids bones are also made up of various other chemicals which are which which can be used in the, in the stress situation so in the stress situation we are going to resolve our bone we are going to degenerate our bone and and save our body in this diagram you can see this is a small diagram in which the action of cortisol has been depicted the cortisol is secreted by the adrenal cortex over here and its uh, effect on the uh, on the calcium it decreases the absorption of calcium from the intestine actually it decreases the absorption throughout the, the body it, it 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 decreases it reduces the absorption because in the stress situation we are not going to absorb anything in a stress situation or we are not uh, going to absorb anything we are not going to digest anything in the stress situation so we are going to save our body we are not going to absorb something so it also decrease the absorption of calcium from the intestine in the stress situation it stimulate the 
the cortisol stimulates the secretion of gastric acid. Now you will you will be amazed why why the gastric acid the HCl is secreted by the by the intestine. If, if there is no digestion, if it decreases the digestion, if it decreases the absorption of calcium, then why we the why the gastric acid is needed by the cortisol? So uh, as I have told you that the cortisol is secreted during the stress situation and the stress situation. Uh, that in which there is some sort of attack of the pathogens on the body and there is some sort of uh, hypersensitivity reaction. So in this, when, uh, when there is a pathogenic attack on the body, the pathogen may also attack on the oral side. So when the pathogen attack on the oral side, it's, these pathogens will be destroyed by the gastric acid. These pathogens will be destroyed by the by the SCL within the stomach. So the, in the stomach during the stress situation, the SCL will be increased, the SCL concentration will be in, in, increased naturally. Why to to cope with the pathogen, to to kill all the pathogen within the body, to kill all the pathogen within the gastrointestinal tract. So this is uh, one of the action of the cortisol. The, uh, the cortisol also increase the uh, dip, uh, deposition of memory increase the consolidation of memory the consolidation of memory i have al already told you the consolidation of memory the steps of consolidation of memory uh, in the previous uh, lectures but uh, you should just learn that uh, the consolidation of memory is also enhanced by the cortisol by the, the steroids uh, it also increases the glomerular filtration rate. If in the stress situation, what is why the uh, why this is needed? Uh, why to increase the glomerular filtration rate? Because in the stress situation, there may be an attack of the pathogen on the body, and the pathogen may be uh, diffused inside the body. If the pathogen are diffused inside the body, that may come into the bloodstream, and when then those pathogens come into the bloodstream, so our body going to our body is going to to excrete those pathogen, to excrete those uh, remnants of the pathogen from the body. So the increased filter, uh, glomerular filtration will increase the, uh, increase the toxic compound uh, secretion, excretion from the body. Increase the excretion of toxic compound and pathogen from the body. This is also one of the action of the uh, cortisol. In this diagram, you can see that uh, the, during stress situation, during normal situation, the amino acid goes from the bloodstream to the muscular tissues, and uh, during the stress situation, the muscular from the muscular tissue, the, the breakdown of the muscle tissue is carried out, and that uh, breakdown leads to the liberation of the amino acid that goes to the bloodstream, and that uh, and those amino acid goes to the liver. In this diagram, uh, you can see that the cortisol enhances the effect of the glucagon, and when the glucagon is uh, the effect of the glucagon is enhanced, it also enhances the effect of the epinephrine. Uh, so, when the glucagon and epinephrine effect is increased, what will happen? It will increase the the transfer of amino acid into the liver it will also increase the transfer of many other substances the other substances mean substances raw material from the bone from any other tissue it also increases the concentration of glycerol glycerol is a basically liberated from the fats the breakdown uh, final product of the fats and uh, it also carry out the breakdown of glycogen to make glucose glucose unit is Main, the main fuel which is used by the body so this is liberated into the bloodstream and that is this is used by various tissues various tissues of the body